Welcome, Diecast fans. I'm Tom Spanners Watson. And I'm Frank DeGuerre Gibbs. And welcome to episode 9 of season 2 of the Canyon Outlaws. Last week, of course, Cam from Blue Line Racing smashed the old track record and went sub 13. And I'm dying to see what he can do tonight. But first up, it's the Wannabes. And tonight, we've got Strike driving Blue Thunder going up against Harry SP driving Twinkle Toes. And then we've got Toxic Vindicator driven by King Jester going up against Rusted driven by Marco Polo. This first matchup should be a doozy. These lads have been trash talking each other for the last couple of weeks. And now it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Harry SP out of the gate pretty quick here. Gets a good jump over Strike, but Strike pulling him in as they exit Boganelli right up on his tail. Tries to go to the inside, but Harry keeps his composure and shuts down Strike. What a sweet bit of driving there by Harry SP and Twinkle Toes. Let's have another look at that. So Strike and Blue Thunder there saw a bit of an opening, tries to slip up the inside, gets a big drift on, but Harry SP, what a superb bit of driving, mate. Well done. You're moving on to the next round. And I'm sure that trash talking will continue well into the night. All right, next up we've got Toxic Vindicator versus Rusted, and the winner of this race will go on to face Twinkle Toes. Marco Polo out to a big lead here already. Oh, oh and down he goes. He just manages to stay on the track in Boganelli. Now, technically, he is on his wheels, so Toxic Vindicator has to finish this race if he wants wants to win and <laughs> Toxic Vindicator there getting a drift through Big Kahuna Corner but he does secure the win. Let's just have a look at Marco Polo here. He went in way too hot into Boganelli and then he was very very lucky not to go flying off the side there but King Jester moves on to the next round and he will take on Harry SP driving Twinkle Toes. And the winner of this race will go on to challenge Phoenix's Revenge for the number 10 spot on the list. Toxic Vindicator hasn't had a good run this season and it looks like Harry's going to jump out into the lead here. King Jester still close in behind him. Harry tries to block him, but he gets it wrong, goes into the sidewall. I'm not sure if he's trying to stop King Jester there, or if he just got distracted by the latest TikTok dance video. Oh, you mean those Mr. Red ones? Yeah, they've become very popular, those ones. Well, well done, Toxic Vindicator. You move through to challenge for the list. Why not help the channel and look good doing it? ChaosCanyonMerch.online for all of your merch needs. That's ChaosCanyonMerch.online. Link in the description. King Jester is going to have his work cut out for him. Phoenix's Revenge, driven by Tuco, maybe at the bottom of the list, but we know that he is quick. Yeah, he was right on the bumper of Triggered when he set that fastest lap the other week. It's a shame we couldn't have actually got a time for him. Well, he did come second, and as we know, that's the first loser. Whoa, that's harsh. Might be harsh, mate, but it is true. And it looks like Tuco is just going to walk away with this one. Oh no, he starts to go sideways, and he's stalled out in Big Kahuna Corner. Where's Toxic Vindicator? If he's going to make a move, he better do it now. Here he comes. Can he get around Tuco? No, he slams into Tuco. Tuco and pushes him across the finish line. Oh my goodness, that is disappointing for King Jester. Crikey, I bet Tuco's freckle was puckered up just then, thinking he's going to blow that race completely. Well, I mean, to be fair, he really did blow that race. <laughs> it was really just King Jester doing him a huge favour here. Well, I guess that's why the car's named Phoenix's Revenge. Talk about rise from the ashes. Tuco almost managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory there. Yeah, that was definitely a close one, but he does hold on to the number 10 spot, and he is going to be desperate to get out of there. Maybe he just overloaded the car last week trying to keep up with Triggered and it just fell apart this week. Well, let's hope he can get it together as he goes up against Vincent Van Gona driving Head Start. These two have battled a couple of times now and it goes all the way with these two, so this should be a good race. Both drivers are having a little bit of trouble in the tunnel, but it's Tuco out in the lead. He gets tapped from behind by Vincent and Vincent slips around him going through Bogan Alley. What a beautiful move there. Yeah, that was a very smart piece of driving by Vincent Van Gona. I mean, you could say he used his head. Well, dad jokes aside, he takes the win, and Tuco does eventually cross the finish line, but well behind. Going back to Bunganelli, it looked like Tuco may have been trying to shut out Vincent, but he just got hit in the rear quarter, and that was enough to push him sideways, and Vincent manages to get the power down, gets ahead, and never looks back. Are there any other head jokes you want to make before we go to the next race? I mean, there are, but you'll probably tell me off because they're inappropriate. Yeah, that tracks. Okay, next up we've got Andy Moon driving Eclipse going up against Head Start. Now, before before Cam obliterated the track record, Andy held the record so far for this season. Yeah, he's definitely been quick, but he seems to have been stuck on the list a couple of times. Yeah, so far he hasn't made it past halfway. And the Mustang starts to go Mustang, spins around 180, and then goes back again. I'm not sure if he was showing off there or if he lost control. I'm going to say that was little column A, little column B. Well, it doesn't matter what it was, he managed to hold on and takes the win. So 
far, that's three successful defences of their positions on the list. I wonder if we'll manage to see any movement on the list tonight. Well, it's kind of saying it doesn't really matter about that inside lane advantage, even though it is slightly shorter. It doesn't seem to be slowing the Outlaws down. Well, when you're in the top 10 Outlaws, you've got to prove that you can own that spot. So it's only right that you should start from the outside lane. And he is really starting to open up a massive gap back to Boxer now. Lifts two wheels going into Petrol Head Corner and then into Big Kahuna Corner. Does it again, drifts it into the side wall, but takes the win. Not as clean or as fast as we've seen Andy, but look at this, he powered into Big Kahuna Corner so hard, gets two wheels right up off the ground, and then that big drift into the sidewall, he's very lucky he didn't have an accident there, but he held onto it, even though it's a Mustang, and he takes down Boxer and Purple Haze, and now gets to take on the crazy Canuck driving Moose Knuckle. Andy is really going to want to accelerate hard in the first part of the track here, he does not want to get tangled up with Moose Knuckle and Bogan Alley. Wow, that boy's taken off like someone set his pants on fire. Andy Moon leaving Crazy Canuck behind here and he's actually looking better he gets those two wheels up again and he is so lucky he hasn't rolled that thing nice clean run and a very quick time yeah that was much more on form for Andy he's only a fraction of a second behind his best time so he's going to take down the Canuck and let's hope he's got himself together because next up he's going to go up against Cam driving Trigger. Trigger, of course there with the fastest lap time 12.856 I wonder if we'll see him beat that time his car did seem to be running a bit rough after that legend run last week and he seemed to be having some steering issues with the car pulling hard to the right and it looks like it might still be pulling to the right and he closed up behind him and now Trigger jumps out to a massive lead spins around has time and Andy's still barely in the picture and once again Andy Moon denied from moving any higher on the list it's a real shame for Eclipse I thought he had a shot against Trigger there with Trigger not running quite as fast but Cam showing just how fast that car is even when it's a bit damaged it can run away from fast cars Cam now taking on Iron Poet driving Stinger Stinger has had some patchy performance, he got to the top of the list, held it for a little while, but then just hasn't seemed to get it back together. Looked like Iron Pilot might have been trying to take out Cam there. Oh, and Cam slams into the side of the track and slows him right down. <laughs> Even though he came to a complete stop there after that vicious accident, he's still able to get going and post a faster time than some of the other drivers. Unfortunately, Iron Poet not able to capitalise on that, even though he tried hard. But look how hard Triggered hits the sidewall, bounces back, almost goes into the screw that billboard there, and yet somehow still manages to win the race. Well, he is a diecast racing legend for a reason. So Triggered takes down Stinger and now gets to take on Beavermobile. Not that I'm expecting it to be a problem, but Cam is going to want to get out early because if he gets stuck behind the beaver, he could have some real trouble finding his way around it. And Nitro Poutine side by side with Cam as they go into Boganelli. Cam gets spun around. The Beaver Mobile looks like it's stalled, possibly stopped completely. But Cam now running down the track in reverse. And funnily, it doesn't seem to be slowing him down at all. The only thing that seems to slow Cam down at all, mate, was that wall. Trigger takes the win. Beaver Mobile does cross the line. But let's have a look at what happened at the start here. Cam had right away because he was slightly ahead, but neither driver backed down. And Nitro Poutine paid for it, unfortunately. But at least he made it to the bottom of the track. Cam rolled through a number of drivers last week before getting stopped and it looks like he is on a run for the top this week. Oh, he definitely wants to take his rightful place at the top of the list but Munted also deserves to be there so this should be a good one. As we get underway, is Munted going to be able to find the extra speed that he needs to take down Cam? Or in fact just take him out completely by the look of it. Cam once again spun around but he gets away clean and I'm not sure but he seems to be driving even better in reverse than he did in the last race. He did, look at that. So even with getting spun around and getting slowed right down, he still posts a 13.694. That is ridiculously quick. Yeah, there's a lot of other drivers in the wannabes and in fact the outlaws who'd be jealous of that sort of a time. And yet for Cam, that's over a second slower than his best time. It is crazy how much faster than everybody else that he is. And now he gets to take on Landshark driven by Wally Champ for the top spot. Who's your money on for this one, Frank? Well, the way he's going, mate, I've got to say Cam and Triggered. And that looks like a safe bet as Cam gets out to an early lead. Wally Champ trying to close his distance. A little bit of a wiggle there and Wally Champ sees an opportunity and muscles right on by Triggered. What a move. Wally Champ there working harder than a dog trying to bury a bone in a concrete floor and it pays off for him with a beautiful overtake. When Cam got onto the lead early here, I honestly thought it was going to be all over, but then he started to fishtail. I'm not sure if he was getting too much power to the ground or not. Landshark smelt the blood in the water and then muscled on by. What a power move 
the... So Wally Champ not ready to give up the number one spot just yet as he holds out Triggered in a fantastic final battle. And whilst there wasn't the glamour of another track record being smashed, there was still some awesome racing overall. So Tuco left in the gatekeeper role, that is the nerviest position you can have in the whole list. And then Andy Moon again denied getting into that top five spot on the list as well. Well, it doesn't matter where you are on the list at this point, it's really all about where you are at the end of the season, which is coming up soon. All right, that's enough from us tonight. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Tom Spanners Watson. He's Frank the Guru Gibbs. We look forward to seeing you next time. After all military action failed against the threat from the mega robotics enforcement droids, MCP deployed a virus called Blue Web to disable them. Designed to first infect the CPU, it then disrupts all motor function and causes the robots to shut down due to the overload. The testing in the mega robotics labs proved effective, essentially rendering the droids useless and therefore safe to approach and remove. Its use was approved by local government and it was rapidly deployed. However, the virus had unforeseen consequences when used outside of the lab. MREDs started dancing in the streets, which has spurred a number of TikTok dance-off videos. In other news, road rage is at an all-time high after the release of the IMAN A55, as people have no idea how to drive.